Hey, welcome back to Quality Check. Today, I got to see a good movie. How about that? Hold on, I gotta fix this. Oh, oh, got a little lighting issue here. It's fine, it's all good. It's all good. I actually need to get a decent editing program so I can edit things like that out. But it's fine. We're good. So, I got to see Kubo and the Two Strings. Alright, if you don't know, this is a movie from the studio Leica. They are a uh, very, very talented group of uh, animators. They do stop motion animation with the puppets and all. They have made uh, some of my favorite animated films. My glasses aren't even. Some of my favorite animated films, including the one that I have easily accessible here. Coraline. Great fucking movie. I wonder if I'm ever going to reveal it. Maybe. I mean, horror if she's coming up, right? Yeah. This would be a good one. This would be a good one. It's horror. It may be considered like kids horror, but it's still horror, right? Right, core. You want to see Coraline? You want to see core? I'll I'll do Coraline. I might do Coraline. Let's see, let's see. Let's see. Put that back on the shelf. I want you to be here the whole time. You just watch me put that on the shelf and turn back around, and we just continue forward. Yeah, it's important that you watch every step because I like to film like the guys who made Birdemic. Bring you on the journey with me. Yeah. Anyways, Kubo and the Two Strings. We got Leica, they made it. Great film. I mean, that could be my entire review. That could be the whole thing. Honestly, it really could. Um, I feel like anything else would just be me trying to fill fill off blanks. But it you know, it's weird being a human because our ears are uneven. So you, you want your glasses to sit a normal way, but they're always going to be kind of lopsided. It's very strange, the human face. Yeah, whatever. So, let me take a stream of water. James Nguyen, your inspiration. Mm. It's great. Mm. Yeah. Mm, true filmmaking. Mm. Excellent. All right. I'll quit fucking around. All right. So Kubo and the Two Strings, if you haven't seen all the previews, is the story about a young well, young boy named Kubo who has a two-string instrument. I'm just going to call it guitar. I don't know what they're actually called. I'm not a Japanese expert. So I can't, I can't tell you what it's actually called. I'm sorry. Please, please, no angry weebles. Please, please don't attack me. Please, I, I like your stuff most of the time. I own all the Studio Ghibli movies. Please don't kill me. <coughs> I'm dying. <coughs> They're willing me dead. All right. So he has, he has the two-string guitar, and his uh, mother has magical powers, because his mother is from the moon. Yeah. Because this is basically a Japanese folktale, and in Japanese folktales, there are people that literally live on the moon. They're like gods and stuff, and they live on the moon. There's even a Studio Ghibli movie about it. It's called... Uh, the. The, the tale of Princess Kaguya. 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 Yeah. Watch it. It's a good movie. <laughs> but um, we're not talking about that. We're talking about this. So, yeah. And, and she fell in love with a human guy. He's a samurai. And um, her, her dad's not okay with it. Her sisters aren't okay with it. She's not a lot of not okay with it. But they had a baby. Um, it's implied early on that, that Kubo's dad is dead. 
Uh, his mom has had to raise him by herself in a cave. Not sure why he lived in a cave, because there's a village just, just down, just down, down, down the hill. But they live in a cave. It's a nice cave, at least. I mean, it's no bears living in it. They don't wake up every morning and it's like me fucking naked waking up. Ah! 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 I'm a cave! But, um... Yeah. So, she tells him repeatedly not to stay out past dark. Like, you come home. You come home before it gets dark. Because bad things happen. And you think, oh, what, is she worried he's going to get raped? Oh, wait, no, this is a Japanese mysticism movie. It's probably some mystical shit. And you'd think the kid would realize something like that, considering he has magical powers to turn origami to life. Yeah, that's his power. He turns origami to life. Which, not just paper, he can do it with, like, leaves, too. Anything related to plants, basically. It's kind of cool, actually. There's a lot of cool paper folding and stuff like that in here. Yeah. There's literally a scene where he builds a boat out of leaves. That was fucking cool. I liked it. I liked it a lot. Oh my god, there's so many cool scenes in this movie, alright? I could geek out for a long fucking time about every frame of this film. Because it is a splendor to look at. It really is. I love box trolls, but I, I think I love this one way more because uh, there's just so much going on there. Stylistically, it's it's like uh, you you feel that same style that they have to their other works to Coraline, to Paranorman, to box trolls. Even if you go back to some of the stuff when uh, Henry Selick's work, you can still feel some of the stuff bleeding in here. Even though Henry Selleck does not work with Leica. Um, but yeah, you could feel a lot of that. I'm fairly certain that some of the people that are at Leica, like, like, like they, they probably worked on, on the, uh, the Disney films. With it. I say, I say Disney because the, the Nightmare Before Christmas was actually a touchstone pictures film that got Wrought under the Disney umbrella later was technically a Disney film. Ooh. So, yeah. Um, good movie. The story is a very, very compelling story. It's very, very folklorish, very fairy tale. You really get pulled into it. It, it feels like something that you would tell to a kid. Um, it does have some sad parts to it. There's some death in the movie. Uh, but, you know, it's magical stuff, too. And there's lots of spiritual bits. I do like how they touch on the, uh, the Japanese beliefs about uh, the afterlife. It's very nice. Got some cool, cool scenes about that. Um, I really like the acting in the film. I found I was a little worried with them having like you know mostly you know they had like the leads were, were mostly white people and that is a little worrisome when you come in something that's clearly Asian themed but they did a damn good job and because it's animation it's easier to get away with that especially considering most animation is not going to be done with people in mind. Like, yeah, you're just going to get talented voice actors. You're not going to worry about what color the skin is. It's not the same as working with a regular live-action film where you have to put more thought into that. You've got to be more aware of what you're doing and not be tone-deaf about it. You can't just go off and make a movie that was, like, set in Japan and then cast a white lead actress in it and expect no one to question it at all. I'm talking about Ghost in the Shell. Yeah. I know 
because the Japanese people are okay with it, but it's still stupid. I'm sorry. You should know better. If a character's name is Matoko Kusanagi, she shouldn't look like fucking Scarlett Joints. But maybe it'll be good. Who knows? I don't know. Do you know? Nobody knows. All right. So it does have some talented Asian actors in here too. Some of my favorite character actors, Kari Hiroyuki Tagawa, is in it. Fucking love him. If you don't know who he is, uh, Mortal Kombat. He's Shang Tsung in the Mortal Kombat movie. Yo, 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 so is my. You know him? Yeah. He's amazing. I love him. Um, you got George Sky in here. Just, just really, really good. Um, uh, you have Mari, or Mari Mar, Rooney Mara, or Mar, Mara Rooney. I can't. Which is it? Mari Runa, Mara Runa, Rooney. I can't remember her name. The girl with she was in the remake. Of an island on the street, and she was terrible, but so was the rest of the movie. But she's better in here. She plays the two sisters of the mother, and she's very creepy in her performance, which I think wouldn't have been hard to pull off because the puppets were creepy anyway. So I don't want to give away too much of this plot. I really don't. I want you to go watch it. Um. It's it's great. The characters are very, very, very entertaining. Matthew McConaughey was really, really great as the Beatle. Um, I was actually worried, but yeah, I shouldn't be. McConaughey's a good actor. The worst movie I've ever seen him in was fucking that shit fest, Texas Chainsaw the Next Generation. So, I mean, that's telling. Uh, I don't think anybody in that movie came out looking good. Look. So, unlike the last animated film I reviewed, this is a good movie. Um, I don't know how long it's going to stay in theaters now. Uh, so, if it's still in theaters, go watch it. If it's not, buy it when it comes out, rent it, whatever. I would recommend buying it because it's a great film and I believe that you would probably enjoy watching it more than once. So. That's my final verdict on the film. It's great. You should watch it. It's, yeah, it's, it's a classic. Leica is gold. They're good. They're good company. All the movies are good. You got Coraline, you got Perry Morgan, you got Fox Trolls, and you got they're all good. They're good. Good movies. Go watch all of them. Watch them all. Buy them all and have a movie marathon. It would be amazing. Yes. I will see you guys next time. I don't know what I'll be reviewing. We'll see. Until then. Later. <laughs>